if you want this so that you can do this without giving up much of this, keep watching and I'll show you how. Micro racing drones have become pretty popular. They're especially good for indoor flight, for flying around furniture, underneath a table, through shelves, up in the rafters. You can make race courses pretty much anywhere with them. They're a lot of fun. Another advantage is that they're very lightweight. They're not dangerous around people. They generally don't damage anything. They're on the less expensive side of racing drones, and they're a lot of fun. If you're going to get or build a micro indoor racing drone, there's a few things you need to know. A common term for a micro indoor racing drone is a tiny whoop. And a tiny whoop basically means any small racing drone, like all these ones here, that have a protective prop guard on them. And they're also generally quite lightweight. The name tiny whoop came about a couple years ago when Jesse Perkins and some friends figured out you could take a blade inductrix, which is this little quadcopter, and you could put a small lightweight video camera and video transmitter on it right here. And that's all you need to fly an FPV racing drone indoors safely. If you're going to build one, you need to decide on a few things like the type of motors and the frame. These five quadcopters right here, those are all brushed. Brushed motors are less expensive, but they're less efficient and they're less durable. They wear out after five to 10 hours. So you have to replace them as you use them. Then there's brushless motors, which are on these four here in the back. Brushless motors generally don't wear out for the lifetime of the quadcopter unless you crash them hard or they get damaged somehow. Under normal circumstances, they generally don't wear out. You can build brushless ones like these, but you can buy brushless ones. And same with brushed, you can build them or buy them. If you want to build one of these for as cheap as possible, you should stick with a brushed one such as this because you can pick up the whole quadcopter for anywhere from seven to $15. If you want to go brushless, you generally will have to build it yourself like these two or buy a complete one like these two. And those tend to cost about $100. So if you're gonna build one yourself, these three are finished ones with the cameras on them and these are ones that don't have the cameras yet. You'll need to get a little camera and VTX combo like this one that's a small lightweight one where they're together or this one. The difference between these two is the type of antenna. This linear antenna is going to be more durable in crashes, but it's not going to give you as good of a signal in general. This style antenna called a cloverleaf is going to give you a better signal in general, but it's a lot more fragile. You're more likely to bend it and damage it. And then once it's damaged or bent, it's not going to give you a very good signal. You can also get a type like this where the camera and the VTX are split and you can do a low profile mount with that. If you're going to use one of these two cameras, It'll be like this where the camera is sticking up. Maybe even the antenna will be sticking straight up like on this one. But if you do the split type, you can do it low profile like this where the VTX is back here and flat and the camera's down low and you're much less likely to damage the camera or the VTX or the antenna. And you can also fit through skinnier gaps. Today I wanted to show you how to build a brushed version that is very inexpensive. So you start with a frame like this one made by Isheen called the E010 or the E10. If you take off the top, it exposes the circuit board here. The battery plug is soldered into the circuit board right here and you can take the power wires of a micro video camera and video transmitter and solder them straight on there. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. There are a lot of other frames that work well. If you want to spend a little more, you can get this one, which is the E011 made by Isheen also. It has larger motors that are more powerful. Maybe difficult to see in the camera, but they're more fun. And in this video, this is going to be the one I show you how to make today. These ones, they're made by Fury Bee, but they're very similar in every way to the Isheen drones. There's many different options for the types of drones you can use. I personally recommend the, these little Fury Bees or the little Isheens because they're so inexpensive, you can easily replace them or get parts for them as needed. Most of the little inexpensive drones come in a box, just like this one this size, similar pictures on it. So when you open it, you'll get your little drone, which is what we need. And you'll also get a controller. So that's 
that's one of the nicest part about using one of these little drones is because you get a controller with it. You don't have to spend 50 or 100 or 200 dollars extra to get a controller. You can just use the cheap one that's in the package. First thing you have to do with the little drone is take the cover off. And they're all going to be very similar inside. Here's one that's partially taken apart. Looks the same inside. Here's one that I took the control module out. This is the Ishin E11 that has the larger motors, but I needed the control board for something else. Sometimes when you buy these little drones, you can even buy them with extra batteries. This one here came with that one battery plus two more in here, so three batteries. And it only cost a couple dollars extra for the extra batteries. So that's a good way to get more batteries for cheap if you want more than one, which is definitely recommended. The control board is actually more commonly called a flight controller, which on a larger drone looks more like this guy here. But they can come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. And the ones in these happen to be this size right here. The Ishin E11 canopy actually looks like this. It's got studs on it so that you can attach Legos or similar building blocks and attaches over the top of the drone like that, like this. My brother-in-law took his camera and used some double-sided tape to stick the camera to a Lego brick so he can put the camera on the drone like that. He can move it a little forward or a little back to get the weight better or to get the point of view better that he wants. Unfortunately, this camera had a few too many crashes and he damaged the antenna and broke off one of the control buttons and I don't know what else, so it doesn't work anymore. And that's what brought about this video. We're replacing his old broken camera with a new one that is actually a little bit better of a design. It's lower profile and keeps the camera more protected. This is the drone that's getting the new camera. I first have to remove the old camera by unsoldering the power wires that go to the camera in the VTX. The power wires are soldered onto the contacts of the battery plug so they get power directly from the battery. You need to make sure that whatever camera and VTX you get is compatible with the battery you're going to use and with most of these tiny whoops it's going to be a one cell lithium battery at 3.7 volts. Because I'm going to be soldering the power wires directly to the board, I need to cut off the old power connector. Next, I have to strip the insulation off of the power wires, and I do this with an X-Acto knife. You have to be careful not to cut too deep or you'll cut some of the conductive wire inside. I use solder with a flux core so that the joints are clean, smooth, and strong. You can also get stronger and better soldering joints by tinning the wire ends, meaning putting solder on them before you actually solder them to anything else. Here I'm adding flux to where I'm going to solder because that'll make a much better soldering joint. Flux that's in the solder already burns out very quickly, so you need to keep adding flux to it each time you solder. It's critical that you solder the correct wire onto the correct side of the plug. If you get them reversed, you might burn up your camera and VTX. To make sure they're correct, you can look at the screen printing on the circuit board, but I would never completely trust that. I also double check the polarity by holding the battery up to the plug and making sure that I soldered the power onto the correct sides. After I'm positive that I soldered the wires on correctly, I plug in the battery and make sure that the camera is transmitting correctly. The video looks like it's working great, so now we can attach the camera and the VTX to the drone. I'm going to use some double-sided mirror tape to stick down the camera and the VTX, so I'm using rubbing alcohol to clean all the surfaces to get any flux or finger oil or anything off so that the tape sticks really well. This is the 3M mirror tape that I use. It's quite sticky and it lasts a long time. So it's worked really well on a lot of drones for me. Because the circuit board has a lot of components on it, sometimes I have to fold the tape over or make certain sections double thick. 
so that the tape will stick well to the uneven surface. My favorite part about using a split camera VTX system is that you can mount the camera in a unique way. I like to mount it down here in between the ducts where it's safe. I've crashed little drones with this setup a lot and I've never heard a camera when it was down there. It's best if you press down on anything you're sticking down with the mirror tape for 20 or 30 seconds. It'll just help it bond better so that it's less likely to pop off in a crash. You can cut the wires to be shorter and resolder them, but I left them long because the camera and the VTX are probably going to outlive the rest of the drone and they might get moved to a larger drone where I need more wire. The best way I've found to remove the back side of the double sided tape is with some sharp tweezers. Here I'm using a piece of the tape to hold down some of the extra length of wire. Now that everything's soldered and attached, I'll do one more check just to make sure it all works and it looks great. And that's it, now go and fly. I'll put links to the parts and supplies I used in the description below. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. I've got a lot more videos coming.